Hey, Marge. <clears throat> Good to see you this morning. Excuse me. And Linda, good to see you. How are you feeling? How's the heel coming? Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Billy. Y'all rolling in right on time. Oh, I see Michelle. I got Donna in here. Donna, how you feeling today? Got Steven Dot. We got a full house today. Full house, wonderful. Uh, so I got eleven on. Give me one more for the disciples. Hey, what's up, Dave? Give me one more so I got one for every disciple and we'd be good to go. Oh, excuse me. Oh, now we're going in the wrong direction. Alright, well, hey, we're gonna get right, we're gonna we're gonna get into this this morning. So, because we got two things that are really exciting to me, things I just want to draw um, attention to this morning. Um, first of all, if you have the book, just a reminder that we are all the way back at the beginning of the book. So we are on page 49 today. So congratulations. We have officially turned this volume over. Um, I don't know if that's a, impressive or depressing. Um, either way, um, here we are. So the two things I want to draw your attention to, first of all, um, and I'm sure you've seen this throughout the, uh, throughout the, throughout the year. Um, but at the beginning of each month, the authors will put in just a, a very brief essay about um, what they call the marks of new monasticism. Um, of course, we're not trying to start a monastery or anything, but there are usually really important things to be thought about here. And today they hit on one um, with this essay for December that is that really feels important to me. Um, and since I'm the one leading this morning, I get to draw your attention to it. Um, locating our lives in the abandoned places of the empire. And I'm going to allow you go ahead and read it when you have, have some time. But basically the point is, is that as we look at the kingdom of God, like the, the ways that the kingdom has unfolded throughout the years um, and the generations, it has, yes, it has found its, found its footing in, you know, major population cities and, and centers of influence, you know, Rome and Constantinople and, you know, places like that. Um, but so much of our story is the way that the gospel happens in places that get overlooked and nobody seems to notice. Um, even the gospel itself, it says that Jesus comes from Nazareth um, and even the apostles themselves are like, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Like, and there is something, there is something profound, particularly as we enter this Advent into Christmas season, about God's work being done in the places that get forgotten, um, and for me, it's one of the really one of the really important drivers of why I am so committed to rural ministry, is because in so many ways people are like, well, you know, rural people they don't have anything to offer. There's nothing. There's nothing going on there. What I'm saying is that actually these are the these are exactly the places where it seems like the gospel breaks out in new ways, and so so sometimes when we struggle with you know, gee, you know. Are we a center of influence? Gee, do people hear us? Gee, do we have anything to offer? The answer to all those things is yes. God sees us. God hears us. And God is doing wonderful work here. And so um, so I want to encourage you as things, as we roll into winter and things start to quiet down and get slow, um, and these thoughts can enter our minds, this is something that can help us. And so I invite you to read it. The other thing is the thing we have for today um, as we honor the saint. Um, well, he's not a saint. He's the blessed Charles de Foucauld. Um, and his story is a really interesting one, um, and we'll read him as part of our reflection for today. But I won't, I won't read this for you, um, but I will simply say that his story is really interesting and in that he came to a much deeper understanding of his own faith after he spent time in the North African desert with Muslims. And he saw the piety and the prayers of, um, of those people. And in that way, he, um, 
he experienced this dramatic recovery of his Christian faith. And so he began, um, he spent a number of years in a monastery um, and working among the poor. And so his story is a really fascinating one. I invite you to look him up today. Um, but I just wanted to draw attention to this interesting story that, yes, even in our faith, um, we can draw strength and encouragement from other faiths um, that cause us deeper into our own. And so that is, um, that is, that is something that, that seems really important for us in this moment. And so without further ado, I'm going to invite you to quiet your hearts. We are on page 49 in uh, Common Prayer, also on commonprayer.net and on the Common Prayer app. I invite you to quiet your hearts as we pray together. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. As we continue praying through this Advent season, we pray the Collect for the week of November 29th, the first week of Advent. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening danger of sin, and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our antiphon for today. May we cry the gospel from the rooftops, both with our words and with our lives. And holding this close to us, we read the words of Psalm 8, verses 4 through 7. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. And our antiphon once again. May we cry the gospel from the rooftops, both with our words and with our lives. Excuse me. Our first reading for today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And I would remind us, as we talked about on Sunday, that we still exist in this place where readings are readings and ideas and thoughts are going to are going to overlap. Um, yes, we are eager to move into you know sort of the classic Christmas readings that bring us such peace um, at a time when we yearn for peace so much. But there still is this call to acknowledge um, 
to acknowledge the brokenness of the world. And that is, there is so much in, in, in the fact that that is where the gospel starts. It's when we're fed up with the world that we begin to seek a different world. When we're done with this, when we're done with the way the world works, we start looking for a different way to be in the world. Um, and so Isaiah is Isaiah and Jesus in our second reading are both going to speak to this reality. It's still going to continue. It's going to call out this dissatisfaction with the way the world is. Um, and so I invite you to hear these words in that, in that, in that mindset. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not know, and my people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, people laden with iniquity, offspring who do evil, children who deal corruptly, who have forsaken the Lord, who have despised the Holy One of Israel, who are utterly estranged. Why do you seek further beatings? Why do you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head there is no soundness in it, but bruises and sores and bleeding wounds. They have not been drained or bound up or softened with oil. Your country lies desolate, your cities are burned with fire, in your very presence aliens devour your land. It is desolate as overthrown by foreigners. And daughter Zion is left like a booth in a vineyard, like a shelter in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. If the Lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we would have been like Sodom and become like Amora. This is the word of the Lord. And in a moment of silence, I invite you just to reflect how those words might or could reflect sort of how you feel in this moment. Let these words that were spoken to Israel so long ago also speak to you today. And our second reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. One day, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and telling the good news, the chief priests and the scribes came with the elders and said to him, Tell us, by what authority are you doing these things? Who is it who gave you this authority? And he answered them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They discussed it with one another, saying, If we say, from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, all the people will stone us, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. And so they answered that they did not know where it came from. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And returning to our antiphon. May we cry the gospel from the rooftops, both with our words and with our lives. And for our reflection, indeed, we read the words of Charles de Foucauld, who prayed, Father, I abandon myself into your hands. 
do with me what you will. For whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me, as in all your creatures. I hear this prayer, a prayer of total abandonment. It says, Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. For whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me, as in all your creatures. And perhaps never are we more prepared to pray this total prayer of abandonment than when we are sick and suffering or when the world presses down upon us, um, as so many of our friends um, are experiencing in this moment. And so we lift them up before the Lord in prayer. And we do have um, one addition and one update today. Um, today we pray for the family of Lou Gillis, um, who is Brian Cunningham's father-in-law. And of course, Brian is uh, Belinda and Bob's nephew. Um, Lou Gillis passed away at the age of 83. Um, and so leaves leaves his family behind um, a marriage, if I remember correctly, of over fifty years. Um, and so we pray, we pray for the entire family as they uh, as they celebrate and honor his life and also mourn his passing. And so for the Gillis family, we certainly pray. And then also um, was asked to update um, Blake Cunningham, um, who is Brian's son um, and who's Belinda's nephew, um, is recuperating at home um, after COVID. Um, He's still struggling with, with the recovery, um, but things seem to be moving forward very well. So he's out of the hospital um, and, uh, and recouping at home. And of course, um, him and the entire, uh, the entire family will be, will be quarantining for two weeks. And so prayers for the next two weeks, um, which is something we don't speak about enough. Um, for those of us who are trying to stay away, but not necessarily quarantine, we're at least able to get out this much. To quarantine for two whole weeks is, is a bit of a heavy lift. Um, and so we give thanks for Blake's progress and we continue to pray for his road ahead. And so let us be about our work of intercessory prayer. Lord, it's prayers like the one we read today that make us a little bit nervous about our faith. That the saints who's in foot, whose footsteps we follow in, whose shoulders we stand on, when they pray stuff like, I abandon myself to your will, and whatever you do, I'm okay with that, Lord. That feels a little over the top. Or even if we admire it, maybe we reserve it for those who are, who are exceptional in the faith, which couldn't possibly be us. And Lord, in this way, we fall prey to the very same thing that we began our day with today. The idea that the gospel is intended to break forth in some places and in some people. It's set aside for special, gifted people and not for others. It's not intended to break forth in the forgotten places of the empire. It's not, it's not intended to break forth in the forgotten people of the empire. No, Lord, that has never been your gospel. In fact, in so many ways, it's always the reverse. That it's sometimes us, when we feel forgotten and we feel abandoned, when the gospel breaks forth most powerfully in us. It comes out in the places that are often the most forgotten, and it comes out of the most forgotten people, the poor and the marginalized and the vulnerable. Lord, your gospel is so powerful that it doesn't need our power. It only needs yours. And when you breathe, when you work, when you move, you transform lives and you transform places, you transform cultures. And so Lord, far be it from us on this day, even though we may be wary of this prayer and Lord knows I am. Lord, help us to at least be open to the idea that abandonment to your will is not just a pathway to quote unquote, being a good Christian. It's a pathway to happiness. It's a pathway to a more just and generous world. It's a pathway to a life of meaning and purpose. And so, Lord, help us to open our hands a little wider today. Help us to be a little more open to what you're doing in the world. And help us to come alongside you and to participate in the work that you are doing. That indeed we might see your kingdom come and your will be done. 
in our lives than in the places where we live. And Lord, that is why we pray, because we believe in this transformation. So we pray for those who are on list this day. And on this day, we pray for the passing of Lou Gillis, Lord. And Lord, in this sacred moment, we, lo- we mourn the loss of one of your very dear children. And Lord, we ask that you would receive him into your arms. And we ask that you would be with the Gillis family as they mourn his passing and also celebrate a life well lived. And so we offer him to you and pray that you would take care of Lou. And Lord, we celebrate with Blake Cunningham and with his entire family as he is making positive steps towards recovery from COVID. We continue to pray for him and for those who are quarantined with him as they anticipate the next two weeks. We pray that everything would be cleared up and that his story would be one of having weathered this terrible storm that we find ourselves in. We also continue to pray for Bennett Allen Belt, and we pray for Donna Rill, for the family of Mel Pittenger, for Shirley Amspacker, and for an unspoken request battling colon cancer, for Linda Mayo, Ruth Ruth Hess Eichler, Aunt May, Mike Knight, Richard and Beatrice Hess, for Caitlin, for Jennifer Ramsey, for the family of Nancy Brewer, the family of Jeff Campbell, Guy Boyd, Jim Boone, Ron Garrett, Rob Rickle, Gene Alexander, Ray Owings, for the Panzer family, for Mike Driscoll, Terry Shavius, Anna Owings, Joe Zentgraf, Steve Moorhead, Richard and Deborah Hahn, Diane Kuhn, Gene Brothers, Joe Thornton, an unspoken request struggling with anxiety and depression, Margie Snyder, David Miller, Gene Snyder, Sherry Armstrong, Abe Weller, Baby Lacey, Carolyn Yost, another unspoken request struggling with the effects of anxiety and depression, Doug and Diane Hoffman, Cart Denner, Drusilla Short, Karen Anderson, Amber Ash, Savannah Price, Sandy Suit, Alan Showalter, Jeremy Dutterer, Dave Morschbacher, Perry Lyons, Chelsea Sire, Ann Wilson, Dawn Penny, Brian Cunningham, Tom Cross, Dave Cunningham, and Caroline Will. Hear us as we pray, O God. Hear us always in the words that we say, and listen all the more carefully in the words that we do not say, the prayers that come from a silent heart. And looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, we pray the words that he taught us to pray and walk the road that he taught us to walk, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes, Lord, it takes witnessing another person's commitment for us to realize our own lack of faith. Open our eyes to learn, even from strangers who inhabit other faith traditions, what it means to be committed to you. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen indeed. Friends, always a joy and a pleasure to spend these early early morning moments with you all. And so uh, whatever your day looks like today, um, looks like another day where the weather's going to be meh. But I pray that nevertheless, um, that your day is full of the light of God and full of the joy of love, peace, and faith. So until tomorrow morning, have a good one, y'all. Peace and good.